everybody. Welcome to First Look and making a special, I think, his, his first appearance. The camera would be over there, John, is Dr. John LaPook, obviously kind of a neophyte in the world of television. And he will never look into the camera. No. <laughs> yeah. So, so John is working on a piece along with uh, Katie B. Hi, everybody. KDC, KDB, on targeted therapies, and we were just going over it. And I'm actually been I've been a little bit involved because I'm very interested in cancer research and therapy, and unfortunately learned a lot about it through personal experience. So we're talking about targeted therapies. Can you explain for for dummies in in simple terms, or or people who aren't cancer researchers? what a targeted therapy is, and then I'll see if I can do a better job than you did. I look into the camera or I look no, at you? No, you can look at me, or either way, you can look at them. <laughs> so we used to basically do the equivalent of hitting people over the head with a two-by-four and hope that it killed the cancer without knocking out the patient. I call it a scor the scorched body policy, which basically is just take poison, toxic uh, medication, just flood the entire body uh, so you hopefully kill the bad cells and then the good cells can grow back because oftentimes the good cells get obliter obliter obliterated, obliterated yeah. as well, right? That's, that's the problem. And so what you're doing is once we know how the cancer cells work, which fortunately we're learning more and more about through the great research of people like Bert Vogelstein, who is in the piece. Uh, now from we, Johns Hopkins from uh, discovered the Ashkenazi Jew gene and really, as many people consider, the preeminent cancer researcher. I mean, he's treated like a god in the, in the cancer yeah. community. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, he's, he's amazing, and he is such a higher intelligence. When you talk to the guy, you realize it in about two seconds. And he gets paid so little. He works like seven days oh, a week, 14 team. hours a day. It's ridiculous, yeah. and he's my hero. He's great. And uh, so he, you know, he and other people like him have figured out how cancer cells work. And then they, now that you know the blueprints, the game plan, you can say, hmm, I think instead of smashing it over the head, I'm going to go affect this part of the cell, this abnormal protein on the surface that's not on the surface of normal cells, and I'm going to clobber just that protein. So I'm going to just... Target it, not even... It's right, exactly, I'm going to target. That's what the word target... It's kind of like, delicate instead of clobbering. Right. You really, it's, it, it's sort of direct... Uh, therapy that like a, that nasty cell. It's like a sniper. Yeah. Instead of having all this collateral damage, you're just taking out that one cancer cell. Well said, John. Thank you very much. But, but there are a lot of different factors that are that are really attacked. So right. it could be a genetic mutation. Right. It could be the blood supply. Like Avastin works by choking off the blood supply that not only that that feeds the cancer, but that allows the cancer to the spread. You know, the way I think about it is that uh, you know cancers when they spread, they have to spread along blood vessels. And you think about it like um, they lay down their own railroad tracks. So they lay down a little track and they go along that. And they lay down a little more and they go along that. And so they can spread that way and this just cuts the railroad tracks. Right. Or you can think of it like a grape because um, if you cut off the, the grape's supply of, of nourishment through the stem, mm -hmm. the grape shrivels up and dies. That's and that's what the, can the cancerous tumor does. Oh. If the blood supply is cu cut off, it mm -hmm. goes into apoptosis. Ooh. Thank you. I'm impressed. I'm impressing myself. And it basically shrivels up and dies. And that's what anti-angiogenesis is all about. Right. And some, some factors... It's excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Something, you some, aren't you like, wow? I'm like, wow. Some uh, drugs I'm like Levec like actually wow. make a cell. They induce a, apoptosis. And they just say, you know what? You're off. We're turning you off. Right. And that cell just turns off and dies. Right. Because there's like a growth factor sometimes. Like a... Anyway, it's really interesting it's stuff. It's amazing stuff, very exciting. But Hard we, to understand, but I hope we explained it well. And we need a ton more money. That but is but I think also anyone who has experienced chemotherapy or some kind of pretty harsh mm -hmm. uh, treatment for, for a cancer of any kind knows how debilitating that can be. And right. while these have side effects, they're much less toxic and much less damaging, which really means that while you're undergoing therapy, you can maintain a quality of life. Which is so important. You know, which you sometimes can't because I quite frankly believe that the chemotherapy can be almost as, as, as deadly to the body in these huge doses as the cancer itself. But obviously it's a necessary treatment for a lot of these diseases if you want to, if you opt to go for treatment at all, right John? Right, we're trying to get smarter, more delicate, and just affect those cancer cells without affecting the normal cells. And and tomorrow we're, oh sorry, you have I was going to say, and another reason this is very timely is there's a big study in the New England Journal of Medicine today that looks at the long-term effects of cancer therapies on uh, people who beat pediatric cancer. They may have cured the cancer, but 30 years later they have a lot of other health problems. So the fact mm. that we have this series today 
it makes a lot of sense because right. this is the future. This that is the is hope. That is a big argument to not, because I think they're getting sick as adults because their immune system has been compromised by exactly. the, the course of treatment. So I think obviously this is the wave of the future. For people like me, it's not happening fast enough, but there are people working their tails off in the cancer community. And tomorrow we're doing a piece, and then this is probably the longest first look ever, <laughs> on supercomputers. And this is a, sort of the marriage of technology and cancer therapy where a computer, unlike the, the human eye or any kind of microscope, can really very uh, carefully analyze uh, a tumor's, uh, I guess, makeup, genetic makeup, or again, proteins, et cetera, to figure out what uh, chemotherapeutic or targeted approach may work. And now they're even starting to put the cancerous cells along with the particular therapies together on the computer to see how that cancer will respond. And I think this is so important because it seems to me, John, when people have cancer, it's sort of like you throw it against the wall and see what, what sticks. There's no way to predict if your particular cancer and your biology is going to be responsive to any one treatment. So anything that can be done in advance, either in a test tube or a Petri dish or on a supercomputer, to kind of determine the, the possibility of a success rate or a response rate will save so much time, expense, and human suffering, right? Absolutely. And, you know, actually, I've already had a patient with pancreatic cancer where we took some of the cells, sent it out to a lab in California. That with a supercomputer? No. They actually tested agents. I know who that guy is. And they saw, they try to see what works and what doesn't work. I know. They put him in test tubes yeah. and they, yeah. Which to I mean, me, I couldn't understand when my husband was sick and my sister was sick, why that wasn't done more regularly. Just, I think back then it was hard to even grow these cells in culture, hard technically to actually even do it. I know who you're talking about, that guy in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I know who you're talking about. Anyway. And then you have people like Bert Vogelstein who, who have these robots that take 100,000 different chemicals and test them against cancer cells and see what works. Yeah. So there's a real, it's, it's very I think, exciting. I think it's really interesting. And, um, you know, actually it's time for the evening news <laughs> because first look took so long and <laughs> I better, yeah, now you know everything you ever wanted to know. But anyway, those are a couple of pieces we're working on. Clearly we're very excited about them. Absolutely. All right. So jo Dr. John LaPook, very nice to see you here on First Look. Thank you for your guest shot. Glad, glad to be here, Katie. And, and, and Katie B., sorry I didn't let you get a word in edgewise, <laughs> but you look pretty busy. So, all right, we'll see you tonight.